Welcome back to Jay Smokehouse and the History of Cannabis series, Episode 10, Cannabis in the 1800s, Part 1. Now we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off in Episode 9, and that would be with Napoleon Bonaparte and his invasion in Egypt in 1798. Now, as we covered in previous episodes, in the Abbasid Caliphate and the Muslim empires, they outlawed alcohol or deemed it illegal. Therefore, Napoleon and his men found it very difficult to find alcohol or any type of fermentation to enjoy. Now, due to this, they actually started learning from the local populace about hashish. Now, sure that many in Europe had heard the name hashish. However, very few knew what it was or anything about it. So this is really the first time that the Western world is introduced to hashish. Now, with Napoleon Bonaparte, there was a small scientific team, and not only did they discover the Rosetta Stone, which is the very, very famous and crucial stone, it allowed us to be able to translate ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and their language. And so that was a very, very big thing with the Rosetta Stone. Now, not only that, they also apparently sent back hashish to France, where really the first clinical trials and research in the Western world was conducted on hashish. So this would have been the first recorded instance that hashish made it to France, let alone Europe. And then historically, many people know about Napoleon banning hashish in Egypt. However, from my research, it seems that Napoleon did not have any part to do with the banning of hashish. The ban on hashish was put in place in 1800. Now, Napoleon Bonaparte left Egypt for France in 1799. It seems it was his predecessor, and actually not his first predecessor, but his second predecessor, as his first one was assassinated pretty quickly. And so his second predecessor would have been Jacques-Francois Mignot. Now, Mignot actually converted to Islam and actually took a new name, Abdallah. And then he even married a very rich nobleman, Egypt, Egyptian nobleman's daughter. Now, whether or not this played a role in this decision, as we know that the aristocracy or the, the elite in, in the Muslim empires actually looked down upon those who used hashish. And not only that, he also puts forth the reasons that his men were becoming lazy and it seems that he was blaming it all on hashish. And so this is why he put forth the ban of hashish in 1800. Now, the campaign ended one year later, so I don't think it really had that much of an effect. And not only that, it seems that the main reason that Napoleon invaded Russia was to disrupt their cannabis trade. He was actually destroying their hemp crops. And it seems that at the time, Russia was around 80% of all cannabis products. They were creating hemp rope, hemp sales, all of what was needed at the time. And so him destroying their hemp crops was a really, really big thing to Russia. And he was doing this retaliatory to Russia. Then we move to William O'Shaughnessy. He is an Irish physician who is made famous for his work done in India, specifically in the historical geographical region of Bengal. By 1835, he had already become a member of the Medical and Physical Society of Calcutta. And this is also where he writes one of his first medical papers on the medicinal benefits of cannabis, specifically cannabis indica in India. Now, he confirmed a lot of the folk uses around India for the medicinal uses of cannabis, along with many other additions to medicinal cannabis. Now, some of the things that he confirmed or discovered were thus. Muscle spasms, menstrual cramps, rheumatism, and the convulsions of tetanus, rabies, and epilepsy. And not only that, it was also used to promote uterine contractions in childbirth and as a sedative to induce sleep. 
And because of all this work, along with all his credentials, which we yet have more to come, he is really credited with introducing cannabis indica to Western medicine. And then in 1843, he was actually made a fellow of the Royal Society. Now, apparently here is a quote for his induction into the society. Distinguished for his acquaintance with the science of medicine and chemistry, eminent as a physician and as a promoter of education among the natives of Bengal. And again, Bengal is that historical geographical location in India. I've also seen that there is rumor. Many think that Queen Victoria herself used medicinal cannabis, specifically for her menstrual cramps. And that is because apparently her personal physician wrote about medicinal cannabis for menstrual cramps quite a lot. However, I haven't seen much to corroborate that, so I'm not going to sit here and say that I know Queen Victoria used cannabis. However, it is a possibility that she did use it medicinally. Then let's touch briefly on the psychiatrist Jacques-Joseph Moreau. There are two things about Moreau. Now, before we get into how Moreau really advanced medicinal cannabis, let's talk about one really cool fact about him. He was a member of the Club des Hashishins. Now, what this translates to is Club of the Hashish Eaters. So he just loved hashish. And this is apparently a front of the building that they would actually meet as a club. He was one of the first actual medical professionals to conduct systematic work on drugs, specifically on cannabis. And he observed the effects on the central nervous system. And he actually cataloged and kept very good record of his observations. And with this, we learned quite a lot more about the effects on the mind. And so he was one of the first trailblazers to actually experiment and catalog his, his experiments with the mind with cannabis. And that is really, really cool and interesting. And we have to really respect him for that. And now we're moving to the United States, and that is with the United States Pharmacopoeia. And the Pharmacopoeia really is the standard for medicine in the country that it's in. But cannabis actually makes it into the U.S. Pharmacopoeia in 1850 as a cure for so many ailments. It's quite interesting. Now, I'm not going to list all of them, but I will have a link to the 1850 U.S. Pharmacopoeia. But here is some of those ailments that it says cannabis can cure. Neuralgia, tetanus, typhus, cholera, rabies, dysentery, alcoholism, opiate addiction, anthrax, leprosy, incontinence, gout, convulsive disorders, tonsillitis, insanity, excessive menstrual bleeding, and uterine bleeding. And also at this time, cannabis extracts were patented and used quite regularly in the United States. Many, many cannabis tinctures were used specifically for these ailments. That was so interesting and it, it, it it's so wild to see all the progress that cannabis has made up until this point i mean you just see so many people praising it in the medicinal fields and being used for all these ailments that many people are reintroducing it for some of these specific ailments it's pretty pretty cool and wild to think about but I'm going to go ahead and leave off there for part one. I will cover the second half of the 1800s in episode 11. Now, really quick, I'm sorry for any noise interruptions. My heat is going is running quite a lot, and it's very hard to get filming in between. So if you hear any buzzing or anything like that, it's probably just my heater. Now, if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything, please leave a like and a comment and let me know what you think. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you can stay up to date with videos coming out in the future. And now, as always, Jay is going to go smoke a Jay.